I'm in the Pacific Northwest and I have literally about 4,000 homes being built stick frame within about two miles of me, all mm -hmm. around me. And they're all building conventionally. And because we have similar, maybe not as cold as South Dakota, we do have um, the same type of climates, heat in the summer, cool, cold in the winter, not too much humidity like uh, one of my colleagues here in the South. But they're, the old homes here used to be uh, their um, moisture barrier was always on the inside, right behind the drywall. But I noticed all these homes now are being built with your uh, Tyvek systems and stuff on the exterior of it. Did you say that you're with this in a similar climate to what you have, you're putting that thermal or that uh, moisture barrier on the inside? Um, that's my one, one question. And then my second question is, um, uh, a lot of basements are built here and they build them with stem walls. Uh, insulating a, uh, a basement area, are you, are you, I've not seen any video to show you using a secondary wall in the basement to create the same thermal effect in the basement, instead of using the mass of the concrete, using the, the uh, SIP system as being your thermal barrier in the basement. Those two are my two questions. All right, so Joe has his hand up, but since I already got a mic on, I'm going to answer this first, and then I'm going to let Joe in. <laughs> so let's go. Let's talk about your first question first, as far as that that air barrier, uh, moisture barrier. So what you're seeing in your area is Tyvek or a house wrap of some sort going on the outside. That is a breathable wrap. So that's not just a vapor barrier. The idea with that is that moisture or, or vapor can go through it so that that surface can dry to the outside, but water, which gets through every siding, there's not a siding out there. Somebody's going to take issue with that, but I'm going to say it anyway. There's, there's basically not a siding out there that doesn't allow some water to get through it. What you want in that situation is the water to get to the Tyvek, but not get to, to the structure of the house. The Tyvek stops that water at that point. The water molecules are too large to go through um, the, the, the Tyvek while they're in liquid form. Once they're in vapor form, they can go out. So now if some moisture does get to that OSB or that structure some way, it can dry to the outside. What we, what we talk about as far as a vapor barrier, vapor retardant, is the seams in our panels. Um, from panel to panel, we use a flashing tape to stop that, and that stops the water. It doesn't allow it to go either direction. That stops the water solid right there. So that moisture that's trying to get to the cooler, drier place in the winter can't get through and can't drive into your wall and get into that joint. But you always want to the extent possible, um, and this is, a, this is a big Joe thing, so I'm, I'm gonna steal his thunder. You always want every surface to be able to dry to the side that it gets wet. So on the inside, you want it to be able to dry to the inside. On the outside, you want it to be able to dry to the outside. And so we don't recommend putting a vapor barrier over the whole wall. Uh, we just do the joints so that if the, some moisture would get in, somehow get to this, we want it to be able to dry back in to the direction it came from. So does that answer that question? Yeah, it does. I just I just know that in the remolds that I've done here in this market, you pull the drywall off and you've got your plastic barrier there, and then you have your insulation, and that's always where you're seeing your mold and your mildew and your dry rot is between that plastic barrier and the exterior. And, and Absolutely. I Maybe I misunderstood what you said about lining the hole inside and not just the joints. So maybe that's what yeah. So so you're absolutely right. And in conventional uh, construction where you have a, a stud cavity, now you have air there that can condense, that can reach a dew point and create moisture. And that that's where now all of a sudden that moisture forms and it hits the back of that plastic that poly that's been hung can't go anywhere. You've got a greenhouse basically at that point and it creates mold. It gets the insulation wet. One of the beauties of building with SIPs is you don't have that, that air in there. You don't, you don't have that, that stud cavity that can create condensation. And so, so uh, you've, re, you've 
eliminated one issue just by building with the, the solid expanded polystyrene. Thank you, that's good. So Joe, do you have something to add before I get to a second question? Oh yeah, and I might take the second one myself if I can remember what the question was. <laughs> but um, Robert, what, what you've described is the difference between vapor barriers, and those are typically required by the code from a building science standpoint on the inside of the building. And they were there, they, they were put in the code to, to minimize vapor transfer from the inside of the building through that cavity construction. So that applies to stick frame construction. When you look at the SIPs, as John's been explaining those, we have solid wall construction, the EPS, OSB, and OSB skin, that in and of itself is a vapor barrier. The perm rating of that is much less than one. So our weak spot with the panel joints or with the panels are the joints themselves where air can actually move through it. Since air carries moisture, once that moisture hits a cold surface, which could be that exterior siding or the roofing material, that's where condensation would occur and the moisture would, would condense, form water droplets and get the exterior OSB wet at that point in time. So the tape that we apply on the joints stops that air from moving through those joints. Now, the Tyvek that you see and the house wrap that's applied on the exterior side of the building, that forms part of the drainage plane. And contractors and, and a lot of people that are building homes that don't get into the geeky stuff like I do, th there's a difference between that exterior side of things where you're looking at drainage planes and the interior side of the building where you're looking at vapor retarders. They serve two totally different purposes and they're often confused by everybody in the building industry. And I forget the second answer, so I'm gonna let, or second question. So I'm gonna let John go back to that one and then I'll, I'll throw my two cents in again. Remind me of your second question. The second question had to, had to do with the basement. Uh, building, oh, basement. Building a yeah. foundation with stem walls, and you you might have a, a foundation in there that's that's a, a slab, um, but a lot of people are converting basements that were not done originally, and now when you're building a house with stem walls and you you have that first floor that is a basement, uh, concrete's a great thermal holder, but are we using to maintain that temperature grade? Are we doing an internal wall in the basement with a SIP system too? Joe's already got his hand up, so I'm going to let Joe jump in. Thanks. It, I'll, I'll, I'll start at new construction then go back to remodels. If, if you think about um, us as people, where do we put our coats and our hats and our gloves? They're all on the outside of our bodies. Houses are, and buildings are no different. The best place to put the insulation is in that exterior envelope. So starting at the foundation and, and working up to the roof, you should be designing your system so that the exterior of your foundation walls are insulated below grade. And then up through this, the, the wall systems, you want your insulation as that exterior envelope. And then when you get to the roof system, you want that to be the exterior insulation. And where I've learned all of this, if you go to Building Science Corporation website, Joe Stebrook is one of the um, country's leading, well, Northern Hemisphere, um, as far as building science gurus and the studies that he and his company have done. And they're the ones that advocate this and have, have shown how this works. So. If you think about that envelope is where you wanna put things, that's the starting point. So now you go back to the remodel and, and that basement. And back in the day, they poured concrete or they stacked block and they stacked it up against the dirt and five feet down from the surface of the ground, the ground remains about 54 degrees all the time. And it doesn't change. So 
you have two choices at that point in time from a remodel. You can excavate around the outside of the basement and put rigid foam in, um, which is a good option from, from the standpoint of insulating. I'm not saying that's a cost-effective solution because it's very expensive to excavate and dig the yard up and all that kind of stuff. So your next best solution is to put rigid insulation on the interior of the wall so that you're actually separating, you're, you're breaking that thermal bridge between the, the, the ground to your concrete or your masonry unit and then to your interior living space that may be upwards of 60, 65 degrees down in the basement. So the rigid foam does that. Don't put poly over the face of that because if you have electrical chases or leaks into that wall, that warm moist air from inside the building, which is still gonna be down in the basement, is gonna work its way into those cavities. You're gonna get condensation occurring in there. And as John had indicated earlier, you wanna be able to, things to dry to the inside because they're certainly not gonna to dry to the ground side of, of a basement. So by putting that vapor barrier, that poly in there, you're actually really hurting yourself. And unfortunately, John started, well, when he started this presentation out, he talked about building codes and building down or, or to code minimums. Building codes are oftentimes wrong in, in what they do and what they require us to do from a construction industry is detrimental to the structure itself. So I would direct your attention to, to Building Science Corporation's website and they have a lot of different assemblies on how to deal with these specific situations. Um, send me an email, Joe Pasma at intercept.com. I'll be glad to send you that link um, after this and, and that will help direct you in the right direction that way. Thank you. Back to you, John. And, and, and just to, to circle back around a new construction, Intercept makes a subgrade panel. And we've had very good success with our subgrade panel. If it's a basement panel, it's got treated plywood on the outside. It does have studs in it. So it's not a, a true SIP, if you will. Um, it's a panelized wall system. Um, and it has the ex expanded polystyrene between the studs. Generally, it's an eight inch thick wall, depending on the depth that you need to go uh, with a, a treated two by eight, one foot on center around it. And it creates a, a beautiful, it, it does everything that Joe just talked about as far as where the insulation is and how it performs. It is subgrade wood. <laughs> and that's a very emotional topic for some individuals. It's been going on for a very long time. Uh, there's science to back it up. But again, you want your customer to be happy with it. So you never try to talk them into something that they're going to always regret and always wonder about. But it is an option worth investigating. So I'll, I'll leave it at that. I've built a number of them over the years and have customers that tell me, bring your, your people that are talking about this, your, your prospects that wonder about this, bring them to my house. And, and I, I love showing off my basement because it, it is functions. It feels like, uh, it feels just like the upstairs. It doesn't have that wet, heavy feel of a basement. It doesn't have the concrete that's sweating all the time and the various features. But again, you want your customers to be very comfortable with what they're dealing with. 